This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a busy month over here, but a good month. I'm preparing for a few things that are coming up in the end of August, early September. I'm gonna be doing a live thing with Ralph Gibson. For those of you who haven't heard about this, I did a video on it and I'll put a link in the description up here so you can check that out if you want. But today we are actually going to get to some viewer work and I've got some awesome stuff that I want to share with you. So without further ado, okay, so first up is this magazine called Spark Volume One. This is actually really nicely done. This comes to us from Thomas Renborg who has a card which reads, Hey Ted, Art of Photography, especially the Artist Series, has been an inspiration for me over the years. Seeing zines and photo books that you share was part of what got me excited to put together my own photo book. The result was Spark Volume 1, a collection of adventure, sports, landscape, and portrait images, largely from the Pacific Northwest. I hope that you enjoy it. All the best, Thomas. So Thomas, this is absolutely outstanding. I don't know if you guys can tell from the video or not, but the print quality on here is really nice. Uh, it's really nicely done, and this is hard to do when you're doing a mix of black and white and color images. And if you had just kind of read me that description, I don't know that I thought it would be as interesting as it is, but I really like this book a lot. One of the things I love about Thomas's work, well, there's a few. First of all, the range that you see in this book. He's doing everything from landscape to action adventure shots to portraits, pretty much what he described. But he does them all in a really unique way. And one of the things that I really love about these is that when we move between black and white and color, there's always a reason for the image to be either black and white or color. So for instance, on a lot of these color shots, you see that Thomas is actually limiting the color palette down to just a couple colors. So you see like blues and reds against the sky and the snow. And of course, this is easy to do when you're in snow, but it's very intentional. But the cool thing about it is then he shifts over into these greens when he gets to the forest shots. And I really love the way that he's considering the environment is part of the action shots that he's doing. I think it's pretty much an essential element and it puts everything into context. I really love the portrait work that's in here and there's two styles that Thomas is moving between. We have kind of the more formal headshot types of portraits that are all really nicely framed. And then he has this style which is more improvisational, it's more candid and just people sitting around and, and enjoying themselves. I think this is just really outstanding and I love the way it's done. The black and white work is really nice too and it probably helps that the book is really nicely printed. Uh, that certainly will get him in the right direction. But the contrast balance on these is awesome. It's not too contrasty, but it's also not too flat. And I really like the way he treats black and white. You can see with the landscape shots in particular that he is more of a traditional background stemming from the Ansel Adams kind of school of black and white rendering. Uh, everything's really well done in here. Excellent and intentional use of color. Excellent black and white. There's a really a lot to like here. I think Thomas has a really nice range to the work he does. I will put a link to this and all of the other people, of course, that I'm featuring in this video in the show description below. So make sure you check them out and support your colleagues. Uh, this is a fine book and I believe he has this for sale. So Thomas, thanks for sending this. This is really awesome work. All right, so next up we have a little zine. This comes to us from Randall Romano. This is called Revealing Strolls, Life in Canada's Financial District. District. Randall did not include a note, but I do want to read you a little bit on the intro of this to give you some context of what these images are about. So from the intro, the project's title, Revealing Strolls, stems from photographs of the financial district revealed to me during my many rambles or walks through this concentrated and populated area. To stroll means simple to walk leisurely as inclination directs. The more time I have spent photographing and strolling in this district, the more familiar the area has become, resulting in better photographs. Capturing the true character of this 15 block area has involved making photographs of the commuters, people walking, taking breaks and interacting, support workers and financial workers, photographing in the lobbies, through the windows, on the streets and back alleys. Walking, exploring and keen observation have conceded many interesting moments, some compelling while others are just part of ordinary life, yet all genuine and real. Undeniably, what I love the most about candid street photography is the moments shared that are part of everyday life, unfiltered and seen by me, the casual observer. These moments are honest, natural realities of life snatched by the camera and initiated by the quick reflexes and courage of the photographer. They represent a snapshot of the district of the true soul of the people within. Okay, so Randall, awesome work in here. I really love the high contrast black and white style that you're going for. I really love the subject matter too. I think this is a really unusual type of book to do. Uh, it's very specific in terms of the way you're approaching street photography. And let me preface it by saying this, that I think street photography in the modern age is actually very difficult. A lot of that has to do with the maturity of street, for, street photography as an art form coming into fruition in the 1950s and 1960s. And so there's this nostalgia that we tend to have with that. Today, things don't look the same. And 
so a lot of times people are either going for that style or they're trying to do something different, but it's not rooted in anything. This I think really works. I think some of your strongest shots in here are stuff where you're playing with light. And the other thing is playing with geometry. I think both those are extremely solid. Another thing that I want to point out that I think is gonna help a lot of people because I get a lot of this type of thing in where people are working with a high contrast look like this. What happens with this type of printing is that blacks and shadows tend to get swallowed. Like you don't, you lose detail when you get into shadows. A lot of times this becomes a problem because if you're losing detail that is fundamental to the image, then it becomes hard for the viewer to associate what's being communicated within the image. And I say this because I've had a lot of work come in and I seem like I'm saying this all the time where the contrast does get in the way of what's being produced. What's interesting here, and I think this has a lot to do with Randall's style, is that I'm not getting that. Now we do have shadows that go into pure black really fast, uh, but it still looks good and I'm not losing the integrity of the composition of the image. So it's all gonna be situational depending on what kind of work we're talking about, what the images are. But I think this is a style that really works well with this. And I think some of the key to his style is being able to think in high contrast. I'm just guessing. I've never met Randall and I don't know. But I, the integrity of each image is still there. And that's one thing that I really like about this work. Anyway, Randall, thank you for sending this. This is awesome. I'll put links in the show description. A couple more projects that I've got that are really cool. This book called Indecisive that is somewhat indecisive. And we also have, and don't get a lot of these, this is a CD that is done by a musician who also does his own photography and did all the packaging. So I wanna to get to these, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. How easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes? Squarespace has you covered, it's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit get started. You can start by selecting from an impressive collection of customizable templates, or you can do what I do, build your own. Something unique because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like books or prints? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from. Then just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid, you can make them float on top of one another, you can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work. Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Squarespace has the capabilities to not only set up your online store and collect payments, but they also give you all the tools that you're gonna to need to be successful. Managing shipping and payment options, manage your orders and engage with your customers. They even give you the tax tools that you need to keep things organized and stay compliant. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP Sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up is this little zine called Indecisive, and this comes to us from Matt Sanchez. Matt also includes a note here, which reads, Hey Ted, my name is Matt, a San Francisco-based photographer, soon moving to Austin. I'm a longtime follower of your channel, and I wanted to give you a copy of my first zine, Indecisive. Mostly shoot black and white and never share my color work, so I wanted to do something special with this first one and make it a double feature. I hope you enjoy it, Matt. So one of the things that's hard to do in the format that I show when I hold stuff up in front of the camera is that first half of the book is black and white, and the second second half of the book, Indecisive, is in color. He switches formats here, so we've got to go upside down, and it's got a red thing on the back. So a couple things that I want to mention on here, Matt, and this is going to be a little bit critical, so take it or leave it, but this would be my advice to you. So first of all, I love the work 
work in here. I think your black and white work is your strong point. You kind of admit that so much to where you're always sharing your black and white as you say in your letter and that color you really never share. The color is not bad. I think the color is just mashed in here for the sake of having the double feature book. Now, this is an interesting idea and I've seen stuff like this before. The only thing that just really doesn't work for me is when you start with the black and white stuff or if you start with the color, you can go either way. And then you get to the middle of the book, we have a flip now. So you actually physically have to turn the book. Now the problem with doing that is all of a sudden I have to flip the pages backwards in the opposite direction. You can't just continue. So while I think that's kind of a clever solution here, in terms of readability and in terms of if somebody's actually going to go through the trouble of flipping through your color work, I think that some other solution would probably be more appropriate here. Now, this is just my opinion on this. I love that you're going for something and trying to do something that's very different. I'm just not sure that this is the best solution in this point. The other thing I wanna mention is on the color work. Your strongest image in here is this one, which would be the first if you start with the color side, but unfortunately it's the last if you start on the other side and then you're flipping through this way. I like this because the color is very defined. It's very intentional the way it's done. So you have this woman with the pink jacket that's really dominating a lot of the color that's in here. You have a little bit of greens and some stuff outside of that. But this one just tends to have a better, uh, better intention to what it's trying to communicate using color. I don't see this across the board. They kind of vary in terms of what you're trying to do with these. And I think some of them are more effective than others. And I think this comes back around to when we talk about the differences between shooting and black and white color, they really are very different in the way that they're approached. Uh, I like it when color exists for a reason and there's a reason for it to be color. And I like that when black and white images are there for a reason too. Now your black and white work, I have the very opposite feeling with. I feel like it's really strong and I think it's really good. I like that you're starting to look for unusual things, for unusual expressions, for unusual circumstances. And I think there's a lot to really enjoy with that. So I would continue to work with this. I, I, I like the fact you're doing a double feature and a two in one. I'm just not convinced that flipping the book upside down is the right solution for that. I appreciate the fact that you're trying to do something different with this whole idea of the double feature. The thing that bothers me the most is when it's flipped over and all of a sudden the, the experience of flipping through the book is interrupted and you're asking now the viewer to go to work to kind of solve the problem. So if you can figure a way to do that, I think you got something that's really interesting. Black and white work in here is outstanding. I will put Matt's Instagram channel in the show description below. Make sure you check him out. Matt, thanks for sending. All right, so next up is a project that is somewhat uncommon to the standard style of things that we do here on Mail Time, which I actually really like. This comes to us from Jacob Johnson, who's a guitar player. He plays classical guitar as well as lute. And uh, anyway, this is really awesome. It's a CD that he did. He sent me a letter. He was actually at my Richard Avedon talk that I did at the Eamon Carter Museum last month for Fort Worth Photo Fest, so Jacob, thanks for coming. Jacob also sent me a letter here, which is very cool, and I'm gonna just share the story with you. So when he was finishing the CD and going to production, uh, the artist that he was going to work with had to cancel unexpectedly, and he ended up having to do all of his own photography for this, and he describes a lot of it. A lot of it's done on Cinestill film and old vintage cameras. I think he did a really nice job on this. Jacob, this is really cool, and it's funny how an accident like that can kind of turn into a whole new direction for you. And I think that everything in here is very appropriate. I've always been fascinated by two things. First of all, the fact that when you get into graphic design or you get into photography or illustration for music, music is the only product, or I can think of anyway, that where the packaging is actually designed to be saved and it's something that you permanently store the product in. And that's something that I really miss as we move to streaming services in the modern age. I miss going into record stores and I can say I'm guilty of this. I've bought music a lot over the years just based on the cover alone. Uh, so it's something that has a lot of power to it. There aren't a lot of other products that are packaged where they're meant to be saved like that. Having said that, the second part of that is I'm always very fascinated about how the music and the photography or the cover art, whether it's an illustration or photography, works together. There's a mood that's created. Uh, sometimes it's something that's literal that's being shown. If it's a story, if it relates to the lyrics. In this case, it's instrumental music. And I think that you have something that's really cool that's captured that vibe completely. And so very well done on that perspective. Uh, what I would encourage you to do, um, he says he's going to be studying music soon at Texas Wesleyan, which is very cool, so congratulations. As you continue your journey, you might even think about looking more in multimedia. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, obviously music has its thing, but the fact that you're already doing a CD and you're already thinking in that direction, uh, if you look at people who tend to be
be guitar players or musicians as well as photographers, and there are a lot of them. It gets kind of interesting. I mentioned Ralph Gibson earlier. Ralph's a guitar player, and he did a whole suite that he used to do where it was live improvised guitar, and his images would go behind him. Uh, Andy Summers, who used to be the guitar player with the police when they were really big, uh, does stuff that's very similar. And so this whole relationship between art and photography or music and photography, I think it's just really fascinating. I would love to know what you guys think on this. Uh, this is awesome, Jacob. I appreciate it. I will link up to your website and some of your video work in the description below. If you guys have any comments, drop them, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.